Hi everyone, now I'm going to be tying, uh, well I'll basically what it was, I got asked what was my, what was a favourite lure or what was the best lures when I, I used to work in the, the trout fishery, I mean I worked in a trout fishery for 15 years or so and uh, there was many good lures uh, but there was two or three that really stuck out and uh, basically uh, but the, the best one, well one of the best was what they call the grizzle cat. Now I ha do have it on YouTube, though it was all tied a long time ago, so I'm going to obviously redo it. Uh, so, and the one I tied mainly, and I'll tell you, this is a pack of beads here that I bought. I think I bought these way back, 2003 or something. Uh, these were in the Glasgow Angling Centre, and uh, basically these were four mil painted beads, uh, fluorescent red. That's a basically like a number four, as we would class it in. Uh, and a floss, which is really bright. Now, uh, there was two or three sizes, but the most popular size was that when it tied. Now I'm tying it on a size eight barbless hook. This is a full mill hook. It's uh, basically a competition heavyweight. I'll show you it in a second. But I'm putting the bead on. Now, when you put a bead on, you put it on with a small hole, which will be nearest to the eye. Uh, the wider one at the back, so it goes around the bend easier that way. Plus, it's obviously better. Uh, this is a hook I'm using, it's competition heavyweight size 8 and uh, it's basically uh, like a, we call it a grizzle cat because it's very similar to like a cat's whisker as they call it but this is the grizzle or uh, woolly bugger version if you want to call it as the Americans may they class this style as a woolly bugger but it's a good fry pattern so anyway with the hot spot at the head I'm going to use a fire orange thread, in this case this is just the 8 Uni 8 so it's going to tie us down, but what I'm going to quickly do is run down with the thread, just that base of thread on the shank. Come back up. Now what I've got here, now this is the Marabou Bloods, this is a white Marabou Blood. Now these are mainly the tips, and you get lots of them when you buy a patch. Now these ones are from any F&F, &F. you get a fair pile. As long as it's a nice, lovely white, you're looking for as clear a white as you can. Uh, now the trout fishery I used to work at was called Springwater, Springwater Fishery. Now Springwater, uh, when it first opened, uh, oh, it was a brand new lock, it was that man-made, dug out. It was, when it was windy or wet or so, it got, especially early, it was, the, the water got a bit dirty, I mean, a bit coloured with the muck. And so basically, uh, there was a gentleman who basically named the white marabou that he did, called it Springwater White, and it was basically it was really bright in the water, and uh, so Springwater White it was called, and it was basically and very very fluorescent, and worked extremely well. Now, what I've got here, as I say, is the blood. Now I'll get a couple of flies out of this, and the easiest way I did it was just to nick out the stem, so you get a double, pull it together. Depending on the tail length that you want it, you could actually pull it together and then say, right, you know, you want a better taper or a better length. I'm going to level this up with just pinching the tips out, tie it on. Now I lose the like at a good two or three lengths. And you tie this on and the way back down, to the back. And there we are. So basically that was a quick way of tying the, that on. Now the, obviously the stem at the top here, I'm just going to trim it a slight angle. I'll we'll tidy that in the way back up. Flash. I mean there was lots of flash we used. Uh, one that I really like and many of the uh, larger flies. I like using the crinkling flash and this is the chartreuse. So I'm going to get a, two or three strands. Away. Now on my side I'm going to basically put it on the side of the flash. Now you could use chain bead in the fly, which I've done many a time. Now as you can see I'm bringing it around the other side, keeping the hold and then trimming the length of the tail. And there we are. Now I'm going to use a silver rib, just an oval, you could use wire or whatever, but this is just an oval tinsel. Just to hold the hackle, catch it in, the length of the body. 
I'm just going to quickly run the thread back up, just tidy things. Leave your cell a space at the head the area for the hackle, so you can tie it in with a couple of turns. For the body, I'm just going to use, this is a, this is what they call a sparkle chenille, this is the, the Antron version from Vineyard, it's got a wee bit of, it's a chartreuse obviously. Uh, again, I used to use a lot of this when I was at fishery when I tied. I basically tied flies so that people could have the flies that was being it was fishing, and uh, it was just a service to anyone. Now you take a length out, and I use the bare the core, so it ties in much neater and stronger as well. So just wind this up. Now as I say, it is just really a, a woolly bugger. As in Americans, the, the style of fly gives a very nice, a good teardrop shape. We just basically tie this on top, or we'll tie it off, sorry, and then trim away. Just bear some of the core, make sure it's secure. Now you can use a cock hackle or a hen hackle, and I'm, in this case, this is a grizzle. This one's a kirk neck. Uh, this is a, a nice grizzle, some nice long uh, hackles, and uh, they're for tying this at a lure. I want it a length that's basically just slightly longer than the gape of the hook, so you get plenty of movement, and it could be longer if you want it. It's nice and soft, so remove the fluff, tie it on, make sure it's secure. Now up here, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put two or three turns there, and then come down the body. Obviously the chenille will help hold out the fibre. Let's get to the back. Obviously catch in using the rib, rib it all the way up through. The front here, I'm just going to do a couple of turns, a turn sorry, just to basically tie over it. And then we can you can either build the head up, which I'm going to do with the thread. Remove the, the rib, trim out the tail, or the remains of the, sorry, the hackle. And now all we have to do is what finish. So you could put a wee bit of dub in here just to tidy this up, but that, okay, just the colour of the fire arms goes with the, the actual bead, so I'm happy with that. And then it's just a matter of but in varnish, I usually put it onto the bead and let it seep towards the thread. Uh, if it finished, you can seal it. That there will give it another coat, keep it nice and shiny. It's a thin varnish I've put on there, and you see how bright it is. Really, really bright. So there we are, that's basically a grizzle cat. As I say, it's a simple lure. Catches a lot of fish. It did certainly when I was in the fishery. Uh, I mean, it still does now. It's, very popular and it does give it will represent uh, small fish and that's why it works so well because it does represent something so there we are and that's the, the hot head grizzle cat so I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching